Okay, hello there. So, uh, I sent you an email today, and, well, actually, just to clarify, I am recording this the night before, but I'm going to say today as if it is Tuesday, okay? So, it's, it's currently, like, Monday, fairly late, but I am going to speak as if it is Tuesday, because I think that's going to be when you're watching this. Okay, so, it's for GWS 101 class today is cancelled as I said in the email I encourage you to get together and study with your classmates or um, with your groups or someone else in the class anyway since you do know that others in the class are free at that time too so I would suggest taking advantage of that and getting together and having some group study time alright as I mentioned in the email too, make sure that you watch this whole video today so that you're best able to plan out for what you need to work on in the next few weeks alright this is what we're going to talk about in the video these four things. So first is upcoming assignments. Alright, so let's go ahead and look at the schedule and the assignment descriptions. So here's where we are right now. Okay, so it's the 21st and the study guide is available. I've told you to, to look over that already and today in class I was supposed to take any of your questions. Well, since I'm not going to be able to take your questions because I won't be in class, I'm going to have these remote office hours. I'll have more information about that at the end of this video. So, but we were also supposed to talk about these assignments in class. Okay, so I want you to have an awareness of what's going on with these assignments because they are coming up. So let me go ahead and just kind of run through what we're going to be doing the next few weeks. All right, so no class at all this week, right? So this is today, you're watching this video, you're going to be studying on your own instead of class today. Thursday, there's no class at all because I canceled class so that you'd have time to take the exam um, on Blackboard on your own. Alright, so the next week, so a week from now, you're supposed to read Rios. It's not very long, um, but it is a scholarly article. It might take some time to read. And then on Thursday, you're going to have this other reading that you're going to have to do as well. And then you're going to have a response paper due on Rios that day on March 22nd. Alright, two weeks from today, you're going to have to read these two essays from this bridge called My Bag. Um, and we'll be discussing them in class. Even if you read it for your group project, you might want to read it again since we're going to be giving it more special attention in class. And then you're going to have this research project proposal email due that day. Okay, so that's two weeks from now you're going to have this email proposal due. So what's this email proposal even about? Okay, so the research project proposal email is um, one component that you have to do to get ready for the research project itself. The research project is due April 20th, um, so a ways into the future, but you need to pick a topic for it so that you can start doing the research, and you're going to have to pick the topic starting two weeks from now, which is March 7th. All right, so if you go up here to, um, you know, research project proposal email, you'll be taken to this assignment description. All right, this assignment description says, all this stuff about, you know, defining what feminism is based on, um, based on hooks. So your research project will focus on one problem that contributes to oppression on the basis of gender. So make sure you read the research pro project assignment description. So again, this is the assignment description for the email, the proposal email, which is due March 7th. But this is about picking the topic for the research project, which is due April 20th. So in order to do the picking the topic, you have to know a little bit about the, the project itself. Um, so read the project assignment description before you pick a topic so that you have a sense of the, of the scope. So let's look briefly at what that project is about. So this is the assignment description for the final research project. This is the big project due on April 20th. All right, now it's a long description, but actually it's, it's deceiving. It's not actually this long. Um, I don't know how many pages is it. It's five pages, but if you look down here about the project format options, you have these different options for what you can do. Most people end up doing a traditional research paper because it tends to be um, easier for a lot of people. Uh, so you wouldn't have to read the assignment descriptions for all of these if you're only doing the research paper. Um, so so make sure that you look over the research paper. It's six to eight pages, um, double spaced, and it's a typical formal paper. Um, but if you want to look to see what the other requirements are for the other formats, you're welcome to do that. But make sure for sure that you read the first page so that you understand the scope. Okay, so again, this is for the research project due 
um, April 20th, towards the end of the semester. So you're creating a project that utilizes research to shed light on your approved topic. This is the topic that you're going to choose now, well not now, but two weeks from now, and send to me. You have to pick an organizational strategy that enables you to best demonstrate all of this stuff. Um, you have to cite at least two assigned readings from the course, but you also have to summarize and analyze at least two scholarly sources. Okay, scholarly sources are peer reviewed. Peer reviewed. Okay, so scholarly means peer reviewed. Peer reviewed means that it's written by an expert in the field, and it was published in a journal specifically dedicated to such research. And it also means that other experts in the field um, judged, you know, that piece of work to say whether or not it deserved to be published. Um, so for a scholarly journal or for a scholarly publisher, you have editors who are professors. You have editors who are fellow experts in this field and they send it out to reviewers who are also other experts in the field and they give people feedback on it and try to make it into a document that um, really contributes to whatever field it is that they're in. Um, that's what peer review means. You are being judged and edited and helped to create a good document from other experts in the field. And they're usually PhDs um, and it's usually a scholarly journal or a scholarly publisher. Magazines or newspapers are not scholarly sources. Um, reports, government reports, are not scholarly sources, even if it's written by someone who has a PhD. Scholarly source means that it's it's published in these very particular formats. So if you have a question about what is considered scholarly and what is not, you can talk to a reference librarian. If you go to the library's web page, you can see a link for, like if you click on contact us, I think, you can see a link for talking to a research librarian via um, instant messenger. Or you can send me the link or the bibliographic material for whatever it is that you're um, thinking about using as a peer-reviewed source, and I can tell you whether or not it counts. But these peer-reviewed sources need to be long. They need to be, here's what it says, scholarly sources must be written by an academic, published in a peer-reviewed journal or book. They gotta be at least 10 pages long, probably more than 15. Okay, it shouldn't be an abstract, it couldn't, shouldn't be a student thesis or a book review. So make sure that you read all this so you understand the scope of the project, okay? So these are the kind of sources you're going to have to find. This is the kind of um, information that you're going to have to find. So again, this is for the thing that's due in April. But the thing that's due two weeks from now is picking the topic for this, all right? So you have to pick the topic for this project and you have to work with me on it. You have to email me because I need to help you pick something that's specific enough to have a good research project. I've had students who don't follow my advice and don't um, do not do it on the, the topic that we came up with together and they end up doing very poorly, usually because they just didn't pick a good topic. So make sure that you do this correctly and that you are emailing it to me so that I can help you pick a good topic. So here are some useful questions to think about in terms of which topic you want to pick. Um, I want you to pick something that you're invested in. I want you to pick something that is related to something that you really care about. Maybe it's something that we've already talked about in class. Maybe it's something that we're going to talk about in class uh, and you saw it on the schedule. Maybe it's something that you just cared about um, that's not related to the class. If it has something to do with feminism, um, if it's a problem, let's see, if it's a problem that contributes to oppression on the basis of gender, then it's going to count. Okay, so just that is what's needed for, for picking the topic. All right, so what do you do once you kind of have an idea of what you want to do your project on? Maybe you have an idea right now. You're going to have to do some preliminary reading on the topic you're thinking about so that you have a sense of whether there will be enough sources or how to phrase what it is you're talking about. Sometimes you have a good idea, but you're not phrasing it correctly. Therefore, when you do the search terms, you're not going to come up with other things. Um, like, for instance, hypermasculinity versus toxic masculinity. They actually mean about the same thing, um, but they have slightly different meanings, so you'd want to make sure that you are familiar with whatever terminology it is that's related to what you want to talk about. All right, Wikipedia news sites and blogs can be useful for this stage of thinking. Um, these wouldn't be, like Wikipedia, for instance, wouldn't be something you want to cite in your project, but for this stage of thinking, it's actually a really good source. Um, so do some internet research and reading, 
to help you pick a specific topic. Wikipedia articles are actually really great because they usually have really big articles for their really broad topics and they have smaller articles for their more narrow to topics. And you're going to need a more narrow topic for this kind of project. All right, so as you're trying to think about what kind of topic you want, you know, read about it, come to my office hours, discuss your ideas um, so that you can pick a project that you like. But don't assume that your proposal is going to be accepted just because you wrote it. Um, I have to have an, a dialogue with you to help you pick something that's specific enough for this class, but also um, I don't want m multiple people in the class doing the same topic. Okay, So we're going to have different topics for every single student. So I'm going to try to guide you in that kind of a way into specific um, topics so that people aren't repeating. So again, you have to have a specific topic. You can't just say oppression against women. Right? That's way too broad. You have to pick something very specific. Um, or oppression against gay people even is too is too broad. You have to pick something specific. What kind of per what kind of gay person? What kind of oppression? What context does that oppression take place? Um, you can talk about stuff in the U.S. You can talk about stuff outside the U.S. You can pick a particular region, a particular racial group, um, religious group, whatever you want. But again, it has to be phrased as a problem, one problem that contributes. Okay, so don't you know come and write to me about free the nipple. Free the nipple is not a problem. Okay, it would have to be something that is a problem that resulted in the movement to free the nipple. Okay. All right, so again, make sure you do some preliminary reading because that you're gonna have to cite some of those sources later. All right, so when you're finally picked, whatever topic it is that you want to do, and you have um, read about it, and you you feel like you have you're able to phrase your topic as a problem, and you're using terminology that's gonna bring about you know the sources that you need, then you're ready to write the proposal. All right, don't don't make an attachment. Don't write something in Word. It doesn't have to be super formal like that. Okay, so it's fairly informal. So you're just gonna write me an email. That's all you're going to do with no attachments. You're just going to write me an email. You're going to put one on one and proposal in the subject line. That's important because I get way too many emails and I need to be able to distinguish which one's which. So make sure you use this in the subject line. All right, begin the email like with a greeting like, hey, Erica, hey, Prof Professor Chu, something like that. Tell me your proposed research topic in one sentence. <coughs> Excuse me. One sentence. All right, remember your topic must be in the form of a problem. For example, my proposed topic is a problem of trans men in Japan not receiving adequate health care. See how specific that is in one sentence. The problem is if people, if you write three sentences, that means you don't really know what your topic is. All right, one concise sentence. All right, number four, one to three sentences. Tell me why your topic relates to oppression on the basis of gender. This is just to show me that you've thought through this question. Um, I'm not looking for like really detailed information. I just need to know that you have an understanding of this. <coughs> All right. To prove to me that you've actually done the reading and you have the right terms, you're going to have to actually give me to some links. Now, I'm going to know whether or not you actually read these or not because it's going to show in, in whatever topic you chose. But <coughs> to help reduce the amount of times that I have to send the, the proposal back to people and say, nope, read more, try again, I am um, telling you to actually give me some some links. So again, these are preliminary sources. You don't have to cite them in your project. They're just to, to make sure that you're showing me, <coughs> excuse me, that you have looked into this and aren't just saying things off the top of your head. The proposal should demonstrate that you've thought about this, that you've read some about that, that you understand the conversation that's already taking place about this topic, and now you're ready to start joining that conversation. All right, number six, why do you want to do the topic? I mean, in many ways this is not super important, but if I need to help you pick something slightly different because someone else picked that topic already, or yours wasn't specific enough, this is going to help me. Um, kind of guide you in a direction that hopefully is something that you're actually interested in. All right, and when you sign your name, please include your first and last name. Again, because I got a lot of these emails, and I have to be able to keep track of everything for your grades and everything else. And if you do all this, you're going to get 25 points towards the ETC category of your grade. 
but you're not going to get those points until after I've approved your topic. And I will actually use the sentence, um, consider your project approved, or your topic is approved, your proposal is approved. I'm going to say something like that. So I'm not going to give you those points until the topic is approved, which means if I send it back to you and I say, no, I, I don't think you've read enough about this because you're, you're not using um, the right terminology or this is too broad or someone else has done this topic already, if I have to send it back to you and have you do something else, um, you have to write back, okay? So we have to start this conversation by the deadline on the course schedule, which I think is March 7th, but it might take a week or two to finish that, okay? So it's okay if, if you email me back and it takes a couple of days for you to do that, but um, you have to just make sure that you do it and don't just leave it for weeks, otherwise you won't get the points. And you're not gonna know how you're supposed to do your project. And you can't change your, pop your topic after I've approved it. You can come and talk to me to see if you can change it, but you can't just change it on your own. Okay, so that is the research project proposal email that is due on March uh, 7th, and that was the research project itself. Okay, but that's not it. That's not all that's coming up. Okay, so three weeks from today, a little over three weeks, three and a half weeks, you're going to have this short paper due. Okay, the short paper is three to four pages. If you click on this, you'll be taken to this. It's three to four pages, double spaced. I give you the exact word limit at the at the bottom. Nine hundred to twelve hundred words. And this is the assignment description for that. So if you wanted to start that early, it's right here. Okay. Um, it's something that I said. Discuss a specific pro type of problem created or made by, worse by toxic masculinity. All right. I use the word toxic masculinity here. But you can use the word hypermasculinity if you want, since we've talked about hypermasculinity in class. Okay, but toxic masculinity just means, you know, the negative parts about ma masculinity, the, the parts related to domination, the parts related to violence, um, entitlement. Okay? So this is up here, and you're welcome to do this. When you do this, I'm going to give you more feedback on this. I'm going to read this a lot more carefully than I read the response paper, so it's super important that you... Um, that you pay attention to this, that you do well on this, okay? This is not like the response papers. The response papers are like, oh, you did it, I skimmed it, good job, you get full credit. Okay, the short paper, it's going to be a for real legit grade, so make sure that you do well on it. All right, so it's up for you to see what your topic is. Um, you know, if you have questions about oh, this, you have to have a peer-reviewed 10 plus pages document. We already talked about what peer-reviewed um, sources are. So make sure that you understand what this assignment description is. Ask me any questions if you have them. Um, but just be aware that that is coming up um, three weeks, three and a half weeks from now, right before spring break. Okay? So that is all the stuff that is coming up. I know that is a lot, but that is just the state of affairs. All right, so because of the upcoming assignments, I highly recommend that you take the exam early to give yourself time to begin working on other assignments. All right? I know a lot of people, they're just like, oh, I took an exam, I'm not, I'm not done with that class. I will start skipping the class, I will not do anything related to that class because I took an exam, I'm so proud of myself, the end. Well, yeah, you can be proud of yourself, but just realize that we have things that were, are continuing to go on in the class, so it's important that you stay focused. All right, number two, exam directions, okay? So we talked about what's coming up, and now the most immediate thing is the exam. All right, when are you going to take it? Well, one, we don't have class on t Thursday to give you time to prepare or to take the exam. And then you can take it any time on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. The exam is actually up now, um, but I don't recommend taking it until you've had more time to study. So you can take it any time, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The exam must be finished by 11.59 p.m. on Sunday. So this Sunday has to be done by 11.59. It's a timed exam. It takes two hours. So that means you'd have to start by 9.59 p.m in order to finish it by midnight. Now here's what happens, invariably. People do everything at the last minute, you know. I remember like going to look on Blackboard to see, well, how many people have taken the exam? Can I start grading any of them? No, because it's usually like three-fourths of the class is taking it the last two hours that the exam is available. I do not recommend that, okay? You've got several days to take this, but 
you know, prepare in advance, take it early. And I'm not going to judge you if you take it late. I'm probably not even going to notice, but, um, you know, do yourself a favor and prepare for it. Take it at a time that is good for when you're thinking the best and that you're not under pressure and feeling extremely stressed. And you don't want to be taking, taking time that you could be doing something else, preparing for another assignment when you're, you know, procrastinating about studying. So just f skip the procrastination, do the studying, do the exam, and move on to the next assignment. All right, it's up to you when you take the exam, but once you start, you must finish. There's only one opportunity. So you can't like, start it, stop in the middle, and then finish later. You have to take it all at once. All right, where to take the exam? Choose a quiet place where you have strong Wi-Fi. Don't attempt to do it in a place that could get loud. Do it at home or a library or something like that. Don't do it in, like, Dunkin' Donuts. I had a student do it in Dunkin' Donuts once, and they thought it was going to be quiet, and then it got super loud, and they did really bad on it. So make sure you plan ahead. Make sure you give yourself enough time to get set up, maybe do some last-minute reviewing, and to take the exam. Again, the limit is two hours. All right, once you start the exam, you'll have two hours to complete it. After two hours, Blackboard will automatically submit your exam, so make sure that you watch your time. And hopefully you have enough time to just you click submit yourself. Um, it's better that you click submit. There's more of a chance of, of there being no glitch if you do it. Um, but if you don't, Blackboard will do it for you. And you will be able to see all the questions at once. I know sometimes when you take an exam on Blackboard, you can only see one at a time. But this one lets you see all of them at once. And you can change any of them at any point during the time you're taking the exam. All right, it is open note, but you still need to study. All right, do not take the s fact that it's open note as a sign that you don't need to study. You do need to study. Students always do poorly on the midterm, especially in this class. I guess because there's fewer GWS majors and minors in this class, but people are just like, oh, it's general studies, no problem. No, you, you need to study. It's a midterm. Okay, it's a midterm exam. You need to study for it. Um, it's open note, but it is not open time. You can't take t 10 hours to take this. You got two, and there's like 75 questions, or, or 75 points, actually, not 75 questions. There's like, I don't know, much fewer than 75, but 75 points. So even though I warn people and I just say, hey, you know what? People do really poorly. They're getting like 40, 50 percent on um, on the midterm exam because they're not studying. And these same students end up getting way better grades on the final because they, you know, actually took it seriously and studied. Um, I still have people that still do poorly on it. So make sure that you are adequately warned and adequately prepared. My advice is to study for the exam as if you can't use your notes. If you study for your exam like you can't use your notes, then your notes will just be there for when you get stuck. You're not planning on using them, but when you get stuck, they're available to you. But if you're flipping through all your notes, it's going to take you way more than two hours, and the time goes super fast. All right, cheating. Don't use the internet except for the course readings, okay? It's going to give you the wrong answers anyway. Um, if it does give you the right answers and I find out about it, you're going to lose points or you could fail the entire exam. Um, I've definitely taken points off people when they gave information that wasn't in the readings that we did and came from some Google search that they did. So make sure that you are actually following the directions and you are not cheating. Again, if I find out, I definitely have grounds to give you a zero for the entire exam. But if it is something related to the readings, you know, like, um, not something related to the readings, but something that is the readings that we've done in the course or a video that we've done in the course, yeah, you can use that. For sure, anything that I've given you specific links for, you're welcome to use during the exam. But not just random Google searches. Alright, so there's big um, there's big consequences if I do find out that you cheat. All work has to be done completely independently. That seems pretty obvious, but I just want to make sure that I am clear. Do not take this exam with somebody else in the room. Um, I mean, I guess your dog could be in the room, your mom could be in the room, but don't talk to either one of them about your exam. And definitely don't um, you know, text or call or take the exam with somebody else in the class, for sure. Like, you'll get a zero on that if I find out both of you will. All right, study with other folks prior to the exam. That's totally fine. But once you take the exam, you're not supposed to, to talk about it or share resources about it, okay? 
So you're welcome to, to talk with anybody before you take the exam, but don't talk to people after. All right, how to access the exam. Let me just show you super quick, although you probably know. You know, you just log into our Blackboard site. Here's our Blackboard site. And you click on exams in the left menu right here. And then once you click on that, you'll be taken here. You have this warning um, that I put up here, only um, proceed if you're prepared to take the exam. And then this final exam is hidden from you. You can't see it, but I can since I haven't released it yet. But you'll click on midterm exam. Once you click on midterm exam, you will be given the instructions, which just comes off of the um, study guide. And then it will remind you again about what the password is. So here's the password that you're going to need. It'll tell you a little bit more about the settings. And then once you're ready, you'll click begin. You'll enter the password. And then once you, um, and again, the password is no capital letters, no special characters, just I will not cheat lowercase. Once you click enter that, click, so click submit, you'll have two hours after that point to take the exam. Um, so, just this. Alright, some other things that you need to know are what these buttons do. So once you log in to take the exam, you're going to see these two buttons at the top of the exam and at the bottom of the exam. And for some reason, these two buttons are um, right after, like right really close next to the first question. So after each question is something like this, like the second button. After each question, you're going to see something like this. You're going to say however many points it is and then save answer. And it's going to say that for each question. So yeah, after each question, you want to click save answer. You don't have to, actually. You could just click this. Um, this gray one up here, save all answers, and it's going to save anything that you have so far. But yeah, after you're done, you're like, oh yeah, save the answer. Well, since this is so close to that first one, a lot of people end up clicking this big dark blue one after, taking the f after answering the first question. Well, if you do that, if you click this dark blue button, then it's going to submit your exam. Okay, so only click this dark blue button if you're done with the exam. Okay, so make sure that you're warned. Don't click that dark blue button until you are completely finished with the exam. Even though it's kind of easy to mix up with this one, especially when you start the exam. Okay, so, so this button, all this does is it saves your answer, it logs it with um, you know Blackboard servers so that if the internet does get disconnected, you are, your answer has been saved um, in the cloud, basically. So yeah, you want to click that. That's good. You don't have to, but when you're done with the exam completely, once you click on this gray one, save all the answers, and then after they've been saved, click Save and Submit, and then it will actually submit it so that I can grade it. So this, again, this will be after every question. If you want to click this, you can after each one, or you can just click this at the end. All right, tech problems. I usually get one or two people who have a tech problem, and I'm not really sure why, but I think I might figure it out why. So I'm hopeful that now that I've explained all this to you, that I'll have zero people having problems. But but if there is a problem, let's make sure that we um, have some awareness on how to deal with it, okay? So to avoid any technical problems, this is what I suggest you do. do. Close any browser tab, any other browser, any other place where you are logged into Blackboard, just close it, okay? So that the only Blackboard tab or window that is open is the one that you're taking the exam in, right? Hopefully that'll save any glitches that might happen. Now, if you do this, that means that you have to get everything that you need off Blackboard off of it before you begin the exam. So you get all the notes off Blackboard, any links that you need off Blackboard, all of that is somewhere else so that you don't need to access Blackboard once you start the exam. Okay, that's my suggestion to you. Um, actually, not suggestion, this is my direction to you. So make sure you do this so that we, you don't have a, a tech problem related to your exam. 
Okay, I also recommend taking screenshots. This has saved several people um, from having to just do the work of, of taking the exam. Because if some sort of glitch happens, if you get disconnected from the internet, if, um, I don't know, some gremlin gets into your computer, then you'll have to end up taking it a second time if I've determined that you're not actually cheating. Um, so you don't want to have to take it a second time, so you want to make sure that you um, save screenshots. There's a screenshot button on PCs, usually at the top. Um, on Macs, it's a slightly different process, which I'm not remembering right now. So take screenshots while you're taking the exam. That's going to help you if, um, if you do run into a problem. With that being said, don't share your screenshots with anyone, ever. Not, not later this week, not next month, not ever. Okay, if you do run into a technical problem, email me right away, and I'll try to email you back as soon as possible. I might have to change a setting, and I'm much more likely to believe you if you email me right after whatever happened happens. Alright, third thing, and these last two things are not going to take as long. Exam preparation. Alright, so the study guide. It's linked in the course schedule. Let's go ahead and look at it right now. Alright, so here's the study guide. It just has the directions. We've talked about most of the directions already. Uh, let's talk about the structure. Okay? There's going to be fill in the blanks. There's going to be about 15 fill in the blanks. People find that the most challenging thing about the exam generally. Okay, so uh, these are going to be these are going to be things that I have taken from the notes that I give you. They're not necessarily the exact words that come from the notes. So like, let's say the note says um, hypermasculinity. Well, if it says the note says hypermasculinity, you're gonna know that it probably comes from the the mask you you wear film, and um, and you're probably gonna want to know what the film said about that. Um, so it could be like the blank could be hypermasculinity, or the blank could be some other thing that's really important to the term of of um, hypermasculinity. Okay, so it is challenging. Really look at the context of whatever sentence. I give you, I try to give you clues in that sentence so that you can pick the right word. I will tell you whether or not the blank is supposed to be one word or more than one word. Um, you are free to, you know, add more words than what you think, but just realize that uh, I am either not going to give you credit if that happens, or I'll only give you partial credit if that happens. If it happens to work really well, then I might give you full credit. Um, but be aware, I'm usually thinking of something very specific. Alright, matching. Matching is usually the easiest. It's two questions that have 10 terms each. So, so basically 20 terms that you have to match to 20 um, descriptions. They're not necessarily definitions, they're descriptions. And those come off of the notes that I give you. All right, multiple choice. There's actually no multiple choice on this exam. True or false? All right, there are true or false. Okay, then you're gonna have these short answer or longer answer. The short answers are one to four sentences. They're worth four points each. You're gonna have four of those. All right. Then you're gonna have longer questions that are five to twenty sentences. So like a big full paragraph. And you're only gonna have five sentences if you have super long sent like you super long sentences, yeah. Um, so a big full paragraph, and that's gonna be ten points each. And there's gonna be two of those. All right. And there's gonna be seventy-five to eighty points. I think it's like seventy-five, which I will convert to a weighted grade out of a hundred. I will curve the results if needed, but. Sometimes it's not necessary, and if I even if it is necessary, it usually doesn't help you that much. It's usually just one or two percentage points. All right, so how do you prepare? You prepare by looking at these things. The text. Now, when I say text, I mean video or reading. Okay, so anything that I've assigned, reading or video. Look at the text means arguments. Understand the key terms. Understand the context terms and points discussed in class. Key sections of the text pointed out in class, related issues discussed in class, 
and connections with other texts for other course. Most of the time I'm going to put them in the notes. Sometimes they're not going to be in the notes, but most of the time they are. So make sure you look at the notes that you took in class as well as the notes that I provided. Alright, so I used to list like, you know, just a hundred terms or points, but decided to actually just give you notes for each one so that I wouldn't have to wait till the end to give it to you. Alright, so let's go ahead and look at a set of notes right now. This is what I what I gave to you for Logan. Now these are discussion questions, things that we did in class, so make sure that you have a sense of how to answer these. Um, sometimes they are quote, like exactly just taken right from here and put onto an exam question. But a lot of times they're going to be um, just terms like this. Street harassment, sexual harassment. What's the definition for that? Well, read Logan, make sure you have a sense of what the difference is between these two and some other things. Um, slot walk. You know, you could Google slot walk and you come up with a definition. But what does Logan say about it? That's what's important. You could Google entitlement and find out what that means, but that's probably going to give you the wrong answer. You need to know what does entitlement mean in the within the context of Logan's article. Okay? So look it up in Logan. Find a description for this. What does Logan say about this? What does Logan say about all of these? So some of them are going to just be words or phrases. Other things are going to be actual points. Um, so here, I just gave you a point. Street harassment is on the continuum of violence against an oppression of femininity. You know, why would that be significant? We talked about it in class, I think, just that it, it doesn't have to do only with women. It has to do with femininity. It has to do with, you know, gay men, for example, who are viewed as feminine. Um, it has to do with children who aren't women, you know, just kids. So it, people are targeted because of their assumed femininity. So I already just gave you the point, but you might want to know what it means. And then these others you're going to have to look up based on what Logan said. So when I say look it up, don't look it up on the internet. Don't look it up in some other book. Look it up in Logan. What does Logan say about these things? Like, for instance, you look up male gays, you're probably going to find a lot of things about movies. But this is not about movies. Okay, so let's go back to that PowerPoint. So it gives you, you know, these things. And then, how do you prep, prep for the We talked about most of this. You're going to review your notes. You're going to review the main ideas, the texts. You're going to fully understand my notes. You're going to look up context of notes in the text if you don't understand them. And we already did that. All right, so lastly, my remote office hours. So today in class, we were supposed to just be able to ask me questions that you had about the study guide or about the exam or about the notes, you know. You know, maybe you looked up in Logan what Logan said about entitlement, but you didn't understand it. Um, or maybe you couldn't figure out what Logan said about entitlement, so you'd ask me and I'd point it out to you. Well, since that couldn't happen in class today, I'm going to have these remote office hours. So it's today only. You can call me on my phone number. Don't give my phone number to, you know, some random person. It's only for today, and it's only during these times. So you can call me anytime. I give this this time and my number to my other class as well so I don't expect that I'm going to be on f the phone the entire time but it is possible so if I don't answer right away just leave a message and I'll try to call you back right away I might not even like listen to your full message I'll just try to call you back right away if I if I if I decide that you aren't like a robocall or somebody else if I say, oh, this is student, I'm just going to call you back right away. Okay, so don't leave a long answer. Don't leave a long message. Don't ask your question. Just say that you're calling to ask your question, and I'll call you back. Okay? All right, so you're welcome to email me if calling is not your thing, but give me your number so that I can call you back if I think talking through it uh, with you would be better, um, because sometimes it just takes me a long time to write it out, and talking is only going to take me a couple of minutes. And you can email me about the exam or anything else, anytime. It doesn't have to just be today. Alright, so we talked about these four things. And lastly, you know, just keep, cal keep calm. Good luck with the exam. Good luck with the other assignments. Email me if you have any questions, and have a